What do you say, everybody? Welcome to Monday Night Quarterback. Like and subscribe as you hang out right with us here on Bama Insider and BamaInsider.com. We appreciate you more than you know. This site is red hot right now, and it's because of you. We cover Alabama like no other. We've got the best recruiting guy in the business, Andrew Bone. He's going to be on here momentarily to talk about some of Alabama's big-time recruits as they play their college football uh, or their high school football season getting ready for college football. We'll talk to the beat writer for BamaInsider.com. You read all of his work, Tony Sukalis. We're going to get into Alabama practice as they get closer and closer to the big showdown with Miami, that coming up in Atlanta when uh, the Crimson Tide head back to a place that they've won a lot of big games, including the national championship. Uh, But first, guys, let's talk about the sponsor of this show, Westgate Luxury Condominiums, right there next to Bryant-Denny Stadium. Beautiful. You can rent them when you come to town. Uh, Football, non-football weekends. You've got everything that you could possibly want, and the location is unbelievable. I mean, it's literally – you could throw a stone and hit Bryant-Denny Stadium. The uh, the rooftop action is amazing, and it's just a beautiful place, lots of parking and all that stuff, and, and a place where it's tough to park. Great fitness, and we appreciate them for being a part of Monday Night Quarterback. Let me bring him on. There he is, the dad, since the last time we talked – Andrew Bone, uh, congratulations. And before we even talk about college football, I haven't had a chance to say uh, congratulations, Dad, and get the scoop on the newest member of the family. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, Mick. You know, it's certainly uh, certainly exciting over here uh, at our house. And, uh, new new little boy, uh, our first son. So it's, uh, you know, very our first kid overall not just for some but uh but certainly exciting and uh you know, it's been a been a new uh new experience for us an exciting experience and you know as you know it's you know those first few weeks are uh are a little intense uh, so you uh you, you, tr- you try to figure it all out and i think once you kind of figure it out then it you know kind of uh you know uh, changes up on you a little bit so you know the sleep schedule is a little a uh, little different than it was, than it was a few weeks ago but uh but that's okay we're extremely excited and you know healthy baby uh healthy mom and uh everything's going great so i think uh you know he's ready for his first uh first college football game coming up you know, yeah so we'll be sitting at home watching it but uh but yeah we're uh, we're really excited and uh, it's certainly a uh, a great moment for us and uh, we're yeah. really thankful for everybody that's uh that's been supportive of us they hand you this little baby and you just you, you take it home and then <laughs> it's in its crib and there was a point i'm laying in bed and i look over and i'm like Oh my goodness! This, I mean, like that dude's right there. You know, like, it's, it's so real. But, what? Well, congratulations! All right. Well, let's talk recruiting, uh, and let's talk about some of Alabama's premier players as they start their their high school football seasons. Uh, Kobe Prentice, big re- receiver, and uh, he's already off and going. That's right. You know, Kobe Prentice had an unbelievable performance on uh, Friday night for Calera. You know, had the game-winning touchdown, had an interception to end the game. Uh, so really great performance for him. And, you know, it was good for him because that uh, last week we saw the rivals rankings change a little bit. He moved up a little bit in the rankings. Didn't get to that four-star just yet, but he's getting close. And you know, I, I was really anxious to see how he was going to perform on Friday night, and uh, we sent uh, our guys over to uh, to his game. We got some great highlights of him, and uh, he, I think he had in, ended up having three touchdowns, over 120 yards receiving, uh, plus an interception. So uh, it's a great performance for uh, for Kobe, and you know, just an electric football player. I mean, we talked about him a lot during the summer. Uh, you know, once he got that offer from the Crimson Tide, you know, five foot uh, 11, 178 pounds. Uh, was you know, a sub four four forty guy, just an unbelievable uh, you know camp performance, and then to back it up on the field, I think that that certainly uh, adds a lot of confidence. You know, not only to him, but but to Alabama in terms of you know their their excitement about his future and uh, and his athletic ability. So great performance for Kobe on Friday night, and uh, you know, definitely uh, you know excited to see what he's going to be able to do the rest of the season. Yeah, no doubt about it. A, a fun prospect to to keep an eye on, and maybe the guy of all of the uh, upcoming Alabama players in next class that we all have. Look, we're, we're we're when you're a quarterback, everyone's always 
always watching what you're doing. And Ty Simpson from Tennessee, there he is at it and looking good. Look at that bomb there. Yeah, I mean, just uh, it continues to back up everything that we we think about. Uh, you know, Ty Simpson, just an unbelievable uh, first game to his senior season. You know, as you see the stats there, 20 of 24, 325 yards, six total touchdowns. So he had five touchdown passes, ran for one, but he also had over 100 yards rushing on the ground. So, you know, this is a guy that can beat you with his arm and his legs. Um, it's something that you don't see – you know, when you go to a camp or, or you know, when he's go down in Tuscaloosa working out with Coach Bill O'Brien and Nick Saban or, or at the Elite 11, you don't see what he can do, uh, you know, in a game situation, what he can do, uh, you know, running the football. So those are some things that you have to kind of wait for until the season starts. And, uh, you know, we saw his season and it was uh, the, his season opener and just a uh, tremendous game. Uh, you know, definitely a big performance. And, you know, I know Alabama coaches were really excited about, you know, what they saw from him on Friday night. And they're so excited about, uh, you know, his future. I mean, obviously Alabama has been recruiting you know, great quarterbacks for several years and, uh, you know, continues to develop them. And, you know, we continue to see first round draft picks uh, from Tuscaloosa. And uh, I think Ty Simpson certainly is going to have that, uh, you know, uh, unique opportunity down in Tuscaloosa here in the future, you know, with everything that, that's going to be in place for him, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, wide receivers, the offensive line, you know, the, the coordinators, the head coach, and then everything else around the Alabama football uh, program that's going to help make him successful here in the future. I think he's really excited. And I know Alabama's, you know, extremely excited about him and, uh, you know, really anxious to kind of see the rest of the season for him. You know, is he going to continue to put up these unbelievable numbers? Uh, you know, you look at the 2020 for 24, it kind of, kind of reminds you of, uh, uh, of Mac Jones a little bit in terms of his accuracy um, and, uh, you know, the passer rating. So I think this is a guy that uh, Alabama fans should be extremely excited about and, uh, you know, definitely somebody that's going to make a big impact uh, here in the future. But, you know, as a recruit right now, you know, he is – you know, helping Alabama, you know, with certain targets, reaching out to different kids. And when other players see these type of performances, they, you know, they think to themselves, we want to play with somebody like this. This is going to, this is the future, uh, potential future of Alabama's football program. I want to be a part of that. Huge game, six touchdown passes. I mean, that's not a, a bad way to get things going. Let's switch gears here and talk about Elijah Pritchard. Named his top four, Bone. Alabama, are they on the list? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, Alabama continues to be one of Elijah Pritchett's uh, top schools. And uh, in, in my opinion, I, I think they are the top school. I know that there's some different opinions on that. Uh, but he has the top four, it, which we weren't really surprised by that. He came out last week, said he had, was going to announce the top four. And I talked to him a few weeks ago. We had an interview on Bama Insider uh, about what his schedule was going to look like in September, he told me, he said, I'm going to visit Alabama, I'm going to visit Florida State, USC, and Georgia all in September, and I'm going to make that decision probably in late September, early October. So he ends up announcing that top four, which, like I said, wasn't really a surprise. Now, I still think it's probably an Alabama-Florida State recruiting battle. I know there's some people on the Florida State side that feel really confident uh, about Florida State uh, getting his commitment. But at the same time, Florida State has several offensive line commitments. I think they already have five offensive line commitments uh, in its uh, 22 recruiting class. Alabama currently sitting with two offensive line commitments. Even though they signed a great offensive line class last year, you know, they certainly want to add some some big bodies, some great players in this year's class. And Elijah Pritchett has been you know, right at the top of Alabama's recruiting board uh, for a very long time. And you know, this is a guy who visited Alabama for their spring game with his family. Uh, he took his official visit uh, back in June and then returned for the Tice Cookout uh, in July. So if you don't think that Alabama is a top contender for him uh, or right at the top for him, uh, then I think you're mistaken. So he's going to take some visits in the month of September, then make that decision. But this is a, uh, you know, this is a premier prospect that Alabama certainly hopes uh, it can get in its recruiting class. And I believe they have a great chance to do that. Andrew Bone is our recruiting expert here on Bama Insider and BamaInsider.com. As you hang out with us on the YouTube channel, like and subscribe, hit the bell, 
Super chats are always appreciated. We love talking to Andrew Bone here on Monday Night Quarterback. We're going to do it every single Monday throughout Alabama football season and beyond. We, we roll with this show, and it's always great when Bone joins us to give us the update on recruiting. All right, Bone, let's talk about the recent update to the recruiting rankings. Some Alabama players making big moves. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, everybody always kind of wants to see, you know, where their players are ranked. And, uh, you know, obviously there's some guys that you know, are going to move up. There's going to be some guys that move down. And, you know, we didn't really see a, a major move in terms of guys moving down. You know, there were some guys who did drop a few spots, but it was more for players who were moving up uh, in the rankings. And you know, I think with, you know, unless you see somebody – drop 100 spots or drop 75 spots in, in the rankings, it, it's really not that big of a uh, big of a drop just because uh, you're still a four-star, you're still a you know, three-star or, or whatnot, or you're still in the Rivals 250. In terms of guys who I felt like made big moves into the updated uh, you know, Rivals 250, you know, we saw Amari Neblock, uh, the tight end, athlete, wide receiver, whatever you want to call him, uh, make a big move. He was outside. Uh, the Rivals 250 was a three-star. Now he's the uh, 155th uh, overall player in the country. And he came out with a bang uh, this past week in terms of, uh, you know, his playing on, on the field on uh, Friday night. They didn't play an actual uh, season opener. They had, had a jamboree game. Their season opener is going to be this week. But just in his jamboree game playing, uh, he played a half against one team, a half against another team. It was three teams that played in this jamboree. Uh, I think he ended up having around 300 yards receiving and two touchdowns. So this is an extremely impressive uh, specimen who you know, picked up that offer from Alabama during the summer, committed a few weeks, or actually a few days later, uh, six foot four, 230 pounds, uh, can play on either side of the football. You know, I talked to him on uh, on Sunday, and he told me that as of right now, Still kind of leaning more towards playing on the offense side of the ball. Uh, very solid with his commitment. He's not taking any other visits. Scheduled his first official visit, or his only official visit to Alabama on October the 23rd. So uh, he's going to be coming in for that Tennessee uh, weekend. But uh, this is a guy that could potentially continue to climb up the rankings uh, as we uh, you know continue to see him uh, during his senior season. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander. In my opinion, is a uh, you know is a five star recruit. I mean, this is the best player uh, in the state of Alabama. Uh, I think he was around you know in you know number sixty, and then ends up moving up about thirty spots. Now is number thirty overall in the country, which puts him in that five star category. Usually, had you know we usually see about you know, 34, 35 five stars in each recruiting class. So he's in that conversation uh, as a five star. I know some other sites have him as a five star right now. It's okay, <laughs> you know. Not, not, uh, not. Don't see him not being a five star in the uh, in the final rivals rankings. So, uh, I, I certainly think that he's got a chance to uh, to really make a strong impression during uh, during his senior season uh, after he received that big bump uh, a few a uh, few days ago. Great start to his senior season last week uh, against Oxford High School. I think Thompson beat Oxford fifty five to nothing. Uh, completely shut them down uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, I, I think that Jeremiah Alexander had a great performance, seven tackles. Uh, I think he had one and a half sacks, a few tackles for loss. So just uh, a tremendous leader on that defensive side of the ball uh, for the Thompson Warriors. And, uh, you know, definitely a uh, you know top overall player, uh, not only in the state of Alabama, but in the country. Wow, that's some great information. Anything else you want to get to before we uh, head over and talk to Tony Sukos about Alabama football practice? Yeah, you know, as we know, Alabama and uh, oh, just lost my uh, my. You know, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I think that um, recruiting has been kind of slow right now, as we know. And we saw Jake Pope announce his commitment to Alabama last week, which we we broke his commitment down. Uh, Kyle and I did last week, but um, you know, some of these. You know, commitments are probably going to start happening here pretty soon in the month of September. Uh, I think with everybody you know, getting back into the flow of things in terms of you know, football practice, football season, everybody's kind of focused in on that right now. But once we kind of get into September, some kids take in some games, enjoy that game day experience. We're going to see some uh, decisions happen. We're going to see some kids attend the Alabama-Miami game over in Atlanta next weekend, which next week we'll talk about some of those top guys that are going to be coming in uh, for the game that are, you know, they can't be on the sidelines, they can't have any communication with the staff, but they can at least be at the game. We already know some of the guys who are going to be there. But in terms of, uh, you know, potentially who's next, 
terms of making commitments. Uh, you know, we're certainly watching guys like Justice Finkley, uh, four-star defensive lineman from Hewitt Trussell, uh, watching Barry and Brown, uh, the wide receiver, Rivals 100 wide receiver uh, from Nashville. I think those two guys uh, could be getting really close to making decisions. Obviously, Elijah Pritchett uh, says that he's going to make a decision you know, late September, early October. Uh, Jaleel Skinner, uh, tight end out of uh, IMG Academy, uh, originally from Greer, South Carolina, going to be making a commitment uh, in early October. Right now, I just I think he's going to end up going elsewhere, but still uh, still very much in play for Alabama. So we'll kind of see uh, what happens with him. But uh, those are some of the guys that we're watching closely, and, and obviously uh, you know some other guys out there like uh, Denver Harris. Uh, who says he's probably going to make a decision sometime in September as well. That would be a huge get for Alabama if, if they can get five-star cornerback Denver Harris on board uh, in September uh, you know, to go along with its current recruiting class. Hey, Bone, great information. And, again, congratulations on the five-star recruit at your house that's keeping you from a lot of sleep. And we appreciate <laughs> it, man. Let's do it again next Monday. Sounds good, Mick. We'll see you then. Andrew Bone, best in the business when it comes to recruiting. Don't forget, guys, as we bring on Tony Sukalis and we continue Monday Night Quarterback, like and subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, be part of Bama Insider and our YouTube channel. It's on fire, and it's because you guys, you're making it great. Uh, and it's because you love Alabama football, and we bring you the coverage. We, we've got it like no one else. And you can read Bone's work at BamaInsider.com. You want to get the latest on Anything Alabama recruiting, he's got it there. Tony Sukos is our beat writer, and it's going to be great here in just a second to get Tony on and talk about Alabama football practice. And our show is brought to you by Westgate Luxury Condominiums. It's great to be joined by Tony Sukalis. He's the beat writer for Bama Insider, and you can read his work on BamaInsider.com. And it's always great to hang out with him. And before we get into uh, this Alabama football camp getting ready for Miami. Let me remind everyone with Tony that our show Monday Night Quarterback is brought to you by Westgate Luxury Condominiums. You're talking about right next to Bryant-Denny Stadium, your next visit to Tuscaloosa. It'd be the perfect place to stay. Uh, look at it. I mean, you could basically throw a stone and and hit the football stadium. You're in on the heart of campus and downtown right by the strip. And then the Skygate club, that's where we're going to be hanging out after every single home football game, Tony, that's where we're going to be. So you can finish up what you're doing in the stadium and you can swing over and hang out with us. Definitely. Uh, that sounds like a blast, Mick. That may be a, a good way for you to uh, unwind after your, uh, your work covering Alabama. And hopefully you don't ask Coach Saban the wrong question and, um, and get chewed up. But if you do, I mean, man, come over and hang out with us and, and we'll all uh, reminisce about that. But check them out. They're great right there next to uh, Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. That's Wetsgate uh, Luxury Condominiums, and they're the sponsor of Monday Night Quarterback. All right, Tony, you're there on the ground. Um, let's start out with Jaleel Billingsley, Coach Saban. It's like he he's he's not happy with Jaleel right now. Not sure why, but he has a couple of times in his press conferences used him as an example. Yeah, get the shirts ready. Uh, this is not a democracy. It's going to be one of those catchphrases from this season. But um, look, I think this is uh, Nick Saban sending another message to Jaleel Billingsley. Um, apparently he didn't make as much progress with Jaleel as he would have liked to that first time. He kind of brought him up early in camp um, because it doesn't seem like they're a hundred percent, you know, copacetic right now. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I still expect Jaleel Billingsley to have a great year. Uh, maybe sometimes it takes a player a little bit longer to kind of snap into that leadership role. Maybe that's what's happening with Jaleel right now. Uh, Alabama certainly needs him to to step into that role because I think he's not only going to be a big factor in that tight ends room, but also, you know, probably one of the better pass catchers on the team. We saw glimpses of what he could do last year. And honestly, I think he's, you know, arguably one, one of the best or if not the best offensive tight end um, in, in the game uh, in, in the college level. So I think he has a chance to prove that if he can get everything, you know, squared away. Uh, maybe off the field. That's what it sounds like, because I think everyone knows his talent on the field. Yeah, and uh, Coach Saban obviously pushing him to be the best he could possibly be. And and a lot of these guys, you see A.J. McCarron used to get a lot of this from Coach Saban, and uh, he's had a great NFL career. And we're all thinking about him after his knee injury with the Falcons. 
But uh, but it was same kind of thing, you know. Saban would would kind of nip at him every once in a while, um, and it was it seemed like it was off the field stuff. And eventually, McCarron became a great team leader and obviously a multi national champion. Bryce Young's going to try to follow in those footsteps. Tony, how's Bryce been? And let's talk quarterbacks. Yeah, I think Bryce has been doing well. I think you have to remember that he's going up against the first team defense, and this is probably the best defense he's going to see all season. Um, so, it, you know, the numbers aren't going to be necessarily, necessarily, you know, spectacular uh, because he's still gelling with this offense. It has missing pieces on the line and he's going up against like, a great unit. But I think, you know, from the sources we've had, from the reaction from Nick Saban, he seems to be doing pretty well. They, they have a nice confidence in him behind center. So I'm not I'm not worried about Bryce Young. Has he just been, you know, maybe. Tua level, uh, spectacular. You know, you saw some of those stories of Tua in practice. I don't know if we're getting those same stories at the moment about Bryce, but I do think that there's plenty of confidence. I think the talent's right there, and he has the ability to be just as good as, you know, in, in that Mac Jones, Tua, Tungo Vailoa level over time. And uh, we'll just see how he's able to transition. Um, but I don't think it should be a problem. I think by the time, you know, maybe – to the point where Alabama gets to a team that can test them a little bit more. I expect Bryce and, and the rest of the offense around him to be a little bit more gelled and, and, and ready. As you hang out with us here on Bama Insider and the Bama Insider YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Hit that bell. It's free. We want to hang out with you. This is one of the hottest sites as far as Alabama football coverage is concerned. Tony Sukalis is the beat writer for Bama Insider. You can read his work at BamaInsider.com. And then every Monday night, he hangs out with us as we break down Alabama getting ready for Miami to open the season in Atlanta. And Tony, quarterbacks have to have someone to throw to. Alabama, two seasons ago, you were talking about Tua when he was there, maybe the best four receivers on one team in the history of college football. That's that's a pretty bold statement, but I believe that. Uh, what do we have going with this group here? A lot of talent. How are those guys meshing in with what Nick Saban wants? That's a bold claim, but you're right. It might not be a, it might not be a wrong claim. Uh, as far as you know, matching up to that unit, I mean, you, you, you just, it's all perspective, right? Because they've got a lot of talent in this year's unit as well. They're not at that stage. You know, they're not, uh, you know, none of them are going to be first round, or maybe John Mechie might, but uh, probably not going to have a first round pick outside of John Mechie in that unit next year. But I expect there to be, you know, a, a, at least a couple first round picks um, in that unit if the talent plays out. I think Bryce Young will have plenty of options to throw to. Um, you know, there's guys that, you know, everyone's excited about like Jojo Earl and, uh, Ja'Cory Brooks and uh, Ajay Hall. But then there's, you know, the guys that, you know, maybe people forgot about like Javon Baker and Slade Bolden. I think those guys are going to contribute as well. And then Nick Saban, uh, after the scrimmage, he mentioned Jamison Williams. That's a guy that I've been really high on as well. I think he just adds the speed to open up the rest of that unit. So, uh, I I'm expecting, you know, big things from this, from this wide receiving core and, uh, I think, you know, just like we talked about with Bryce Young, it might take some time to kind of really come into its own. I think this wide receiving core has all the talent. It's just a matter of building up that experience. And I don't think it will take that long. How's the offensive line been around these guys? It seems like it's been erratic, but it also doesn't seem like it's been at full strength. I think, you know, we, we saw Chris Owens held out from a scrimmage and then Evan Neal was held out from a scrimmage. And then last week, uh, Emil Ekior was held out of a scrimmage. It's, you know, Kendall Randolph's hurt. So uh, there's missing pieces here and there. Um, it looks like that right tackle spot's really the the one to circle in terms of, you know, who's the question mark of who's going to actually get that last starting spot. And at the moment, it seems like it's five-star freshman uh, J.C. Latham, who, you know, was the highest rated player in, in Alabama's class this year and someone that is, you know, we talked about first-round draft picks with the wide receivers. He's a guy that, you know, has all the makings of a first-round tackle. So um, we've seen it before with an IMG Academy kid come in, start his freshman year. We saw that with Evan Neal uh, two years ago. So I, I, I think J.C. Latham can follow in those footsteps and, and kind of take on that similar you know, path and, and excel at the right tackle position. But it, I think as far as the line altogether is concerned, it, it's another thing of gelling. And it's really just a thing of let's see what we have when it's all healthy and it's all out on the field together because I, I'm not really sure uh, – if anyone knows what it looks like at full strength, you know, from a scrimmage standpoint, because it, nece it hasn't necessarily been there. You know, part of this is the running back group too, right? And they're going to have to probably be their best helping out 
in the past game blocking, right? When you think about it, all these new offensive linemen, you got talent there, but that's something that Nick Saban has always emphasized. Yeah, I think, you know, that that's that's huge. I mean, um, the, the blocking element, the pass blocking element is you, you got to give Bryce Young time to, 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 to reach these targets we're talking about. And yes, he's a guy that can make, you know, plays with his legs. But at the same time, you don't want a young quarterback scrambling for his life, you know, because you're already worried about, you know, decision making and, you know, experience in that standpoint. So if, if he's constantly running for his life, he's probably going to end up making a few bad decisions. And, you know, so you want to do everything you can to help ease this transition. And I think a lot of that, you know, you talked about the pass block. I think that that's huge. Do you think Alabama's offensive game plan against Miami is going to be conservative based on the fact, and we're going to get into the defense here in a second, how good the defense is potentially going to be? I mean, we expect it to be one of the best in college football. And then this offense with, so many young and inexperienced players in really important spots. I do. I think it's going to be a little bit conservative. I don't think it's just going to be like back in stone age, just hand the ball off the whole time. But um, it does seem like um, this, this offense does still need to grow. And, you know, we only got we have less than two weeks now. So uh, unless something, you know, drastically changes or you know, things that we've been not necessarily hearing at scrimmage just magically start happening. Uh, I expect it to be, a little bit easier as they ease some of the new guys in on offense. Um, I do think that, you know, you've got power up front. You've got a really stable, uh, you know, group of running backs. And I think that, you know, it just makes sense maybe to, to lean a little bit more on the run. But like I said, I don't expect it to be, you know, just eye formation, three yards and a cloud of dust kind of <laughs> right. stuff. I, I think that, um, you know, it's going to look like Alabama's offense. I just don't know if they're going to totally open everything up from day one. He's Tony Sukalis. I'm Mick Gillespie. Again, like and subscribe as you hang out with us here on the Bama Insider YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Super chats are also always appreciated. You can read Tony's work. He covers Alabama every single day at BamaInsider.com. We know the offense has question marks. You talked about it. Offensive line, right? Tackle, uh, wide receiver. You know, who's, you know, what's Bryce Young going to look like? But on defense, there aren't a lot of question marks. As a matter of fact, if you want to call a question mark, how good Will Anderson's going to be, that's one of the big questions right now. And it's not, hey, is he going to be good? It's how good can he be? Seven sacks last year as a freshman. He has all of the makings to be one of the greats in the history of the program. Yeah, it, look, part of the reason why things are so difficult on the offensive line is because of guys like Will Anderson. They're charging at the quarterback, and, you know, he's pretty unstoppable. Uh, he was nicknamed the Terminator because of just this fact we're talking about, how disruptive he is and how, you know, much of a problem he causes for his own team during practice. So, um, yeah, I'm expecting big things from him, and, and I think he could be one of the best defenders in the, in the Nick Saban era. Uh, it's a lot of pressure to put on him because we're talking about guys like, you know, Jonathan Allen, like Minka Fitzpatrick, like, you know, uh, Eddie Jackson, uh, Ruben, Ruben Foster, um, Rolando McLean. So, I mean, like, that's a huge list right there. Uh, but he's got that talent and he's got that buzz around him. You know, I think I said on social media the other day, he, he seems like someone that, you know, we're going to be telling the, the next generation about, you know, it's like, oh, I got to see Will Anderson. Will Anderson Jr. play and you know it was, it was legendary stuff it's just a treat to watch him because he's so disruptive and I think he's going to take that to another level because you really saw that light bulb kind of flick on for him in the second half of the season and now you're going to have a whole season of that I I'm just expecting huge things from him yeah I I'm hearing the same thing too I mean the guy was just amazing last year came in with a lot of hype and lived up to it and the other thing that helps him out is that there are so many other playmakers on this defense so it's not like you could really key on Will Anderson and then and, and then shut Alabama's defense down and then the other big guy that we've talked a lot about wasn't even on the team last year and ten, and Henry To'o To'o and this guy was at Tennessee and then all of a sudden now he's he's here in Tuscaloosa and he's calling Alabama's defense I mean and apparently, and, and you would know better than me, but he's able to like tell everyone else on the field where they belong in different yeah, so spots. Earlier, yeah, yeah. So earlier I talked about how Jamison Williams is going to open up the offense in terms of his speed and how that'll help other players. I think, you know, if you look on the defense, that guy that's going to, you know, open up the defense is Henry Tuatoa because of his leadership, because of his ability to play the Mike linebacker position. I think that allows not only does that shore up the spot from that, you know, Dylan Moses held last year, which was, you know, a really tough position to play. It also allows uh, Christian Harris to play 
at his preferred position of whale linebacker. And so you're going to see more of a progression from, from Christian because he doesn't have to step into a new position. He, he's going to be totally comfortable in another year experience. You got a guy like Henry Tuatoa who's seemed to step into that Mike linebacker role pretty effortlessly. And so that shores up the whole middle of the, the linebacking core. We already talked about guys like Will Anderson Jr. and Chris, uh, Christopher Allen. So, I, I mean, I think those four linebackers, if you get them on the field, it, it's going to be pretty hard to stop. And that all starts with Henry Toto kind of allowing that to happen and, and opening up roles and, and allowing other players to focus on just what they need to focus on and what they do best. So I think he's going to be extremely important for them. A lot of depth on this team, and we kind of got into this last week, um, and I want to follow up again this week. Have we gotten an idea of who's going to start in the secondary? Guys like um, McKinstry, you know, Kool-Aid, we are going, okay, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. I mean, even if he doesn't start, I'm sure we're going to see him a lot. But are, are we starting to see a depth chart established? Sure. I mean, look, look, there's guys that you, you think, you know, pretty much a given. Right. So uh, Jordan Battle is going to be a, one of the leaders of this secondary. He's going to take one of the uh, the safety spots. You know, you got a guy like Malachi Moore. He's going to find the field. Uh, uh, Josh Job's going to find the field. He, you know, he's going to probably more probably at star again and, and, Jor- uh, and Job at that cornerback position. Assuming DeMarco Helms can kind of shake off this uh, sprained ankle. I'm, I'm assuming he's going to be the, the other guy at safety. Now, that other cornerback position is the one we always talk about. Right. And that's a, that's an interesting one. So you've got Jalen Armar Davis, uh, who's kind of the more established guy. But then you got Kool Aid McKinstry, who's you know created such a buzz as a five star freshman, a guy that you know really you see as the future of this secondary. Uh, you know maybe next year and down the road. Uh, but there's also a guy that's kind of been mentioned a lot, uh, Kyrie Jackson, a JUCO player, hasn't played football for a while now because you know he missed the, the junior se- the junior college season was canceled last year or moved to the spring rather um, due to COVID nineteen. So, but he's still another guy, uh, a, a tall cornerback that could probably play at safety and um, and, and cornerback. I expect him to kind of play at that cornerback role. I just think he's another guy that keep an eye on. Um, Nick Saban loves those those tall cornerbacks. He doesn't usually bring in JUCO players in, unless they're ready to go from day one. So, Kyrie Jackson definitely a name to watch. All right. Well, it's going to be exciting. Miami coming up, Alabama and Miami. I'm sure that the Crimson Tide are now starting to turn their focus to the Hurricanes in Atlanta. Right, Tony? I mean, they've got to be thinking and, and putting the game plan in place now. I mean, we're less than two weeks away, so they, they better be, right? Uh, they, they, they better have at least have some kind of focus because I think they're going to be heavily favored against Miami, and I, I'm expecting them to, to, to handle business. I don't, I don't even really expect that game to be all too close, but – uh, it, it's game time. So some of these, you know, mistakes you're seeing in, in scrimmage or hearing about rather, um, you can't make those in games. You'll, you'll pay for them. So mm-hmm. it's all about kind of shaping things up. I totally expect Alabama to do so. It seems like they're at a good place. Um, they're about where they, you know, normally are. It sounds like at, at this stage in fall camp. So nothing to be alarmed about just, but it is the, the, the wake up time. You know, I think that's why you saw maybe a little bit of an angrier Nick Saban, in terms of Jaleel Billingsley, the people need to wake up now because it's about to be game week next week. Uh, and then the bright lights turn on and, you know, some of these young guys, they're not allowed to be young guys anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and that's something we've grown accustomed to. True freshmen can get out there and play and contribute. The days of saying, well, for every true freshman we play, we're going to lose or over. You know, these guys are coming in and they're ready. And then part of that is that the development of high school programs, getting them ready for college. And, you know, we heard from Andrew Bone earlier today about some of the top prospects Alabama's going to have, you know, and 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 it's the same thing. I mean, it's, it's like they're just coming in and, and you plug them in and that's what this program's turned into, you know, reloading. Miami's an example of it. They used to do that back in in the early 2000s, and Nick, Nick Saban even better than Miami was. Uh, tell us what you got going on, Tony. What, what can we read at BamaInsider.com? What are you going to be giving us the scoop on this week? Yeah, I think we're, you know, we're just going to handle this last week of – I don't know how you look at it. You either have two weeks of, of offseason left, or I don't know if you count next week as the first week of the season just because it's game week. But uh, we're going to handle, you know, camp coverage like we have been and keep you on top of everything with uh, interviews from Nick Saban and and also players. Uh, We'll have footage of practice as well. And, you know, um, maybe maybe I can get enough info to kind of hammer out a a depth chart and (laughs) don't tell Nick Saban. But maybe we can kind of get you uh, a a little sneak peek of what to expect uh, when Alabama rolls out against Miami. 
Hey, that'd be nice. We'll be keeping an eye out for that. We expect this depth chart now, so we're writing it down and we're saying, oh, hey. No. <laughs> uh, but you know how Nick Saban loves to give out those depth charts. Yeah, he, he loves it. He, he especially loves when we just come up with them ourselves. That's his favorite. <laughs> yeah. I know. He's Tony Sukalis from Bama Insider and BamaInsider.com right here on our YouTube channel, part of Monday Night Quarterback. And let me remind you guys about this. Our show is brought to you by the great people at Westgate Luxury Condominiums. Next time you're in Tuscaloosa, when you make your visit to town, when you come to see campus, Check out Westgate Luxury Condominiums. You got it all. You got the Skygate, uh, which is on the roof, the lounge. Oh, it's fantastic. Huge fitness center. Uh, you can rent these condominiums, and the luxury is amazing, and the location could not be any better, and we appreciate their support of Monday Night Quarterback. Like and subscribe as you hang out with us. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the bell. Super chats are always appreciated. We do this every single Monday night. Kyle Henderson will be on later in the week. Andrew Bone always covering recruiting. Tony Sukalis following the Crimson Tide each and every day. And Trey Yannity on the streets, on the beat, doing this thing. That's Bam Insider. We love you guys. And uh, again, Monday Night Quarterback, I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for watching.